So how to use Azure DevOps Kanban boards? So I love using Azure DevOps, right? And one of the main feature I use all the time is those boards. So boards really let you track visually your work items, right? So you can see all the user stories, the tasks, the features, where they are in the development process. You can see on each of the cards specific fields. You can see the stage where they are. So really a great tool to help you proactively work on your project, right? So in this video, I'll break down how I typically use those Azure DevOps boards. Uh, we will cover specific areas, like how do we drag and drop items from one state or one column to another. We will also show you how to tweak those columns and how do I tweak most of the time the columns to help me in the process. I'll show you how you can tweak those cards to add additional fields that are pretty useful show you how you can use tags, add specific colorings, show you also how you can have a swim lane to prioritize specific work. And this video is just an extract of an end-to-end -end video tutorial that I created on Azure DevOps boards and how to create and manage requirements. So if you wanna learn additional areas of Azure DevOps boards, take a look at the link in the description to access that full end-to-end -end video. Now let's get started with this one. So let me now show you how you can use boards to collaborate with your team member and see the status of those work items, right? So to do that, you go to boards and what you will see is a board displaying the work items. So important to note that you will have a separate board for each work item types. So usually what I do is if I go to epics, I will see all my epics and then you can move your epics from different stages or states. So if I go from this state, I can move the epic to active now, and you see the status or the state of that epic change from new to active. Uh, and I can do the same for the feature and the user story. Also know that if you move an epic to active, the features will not automatically move to active. You have to move them separately, right? So it's independent items, right? So you can do the same for the epics the features, what I usually do though, is because my requirements are stored or my detailed requirements are stored in user stories, I mostly work with the Kanban board for my user stories, right? So how does that work? Look, you can, as we said, drop and drag items once you start working on them. So let's take a look at this one, right? This is the one that we, let's say we started working on that item. You started adding the description, acceptance criteria and so forth. And that item has reprogressed through a state where we can now work and start kind of actively working and collaborating with it. In this case, we actually started already before because as you can see, description, acceptance criteria are already written. I will do that for completely new user stories without even a description. I would move them into active and then start collaborating with the business analyst and, and the product owner to add details in there, right? But let's assume we have a few of these user stories ready. So we move them to active and you can just drag and drop it this way, right? Now, what often I like to do and what people like to do is changing those columns, right? So active doesn't mean detailed state of your active, right? Of your user stories in the active column. You might say it is now in analysis or it's in dev or it's in tests. So to do so, there is a few ways to do it, but the easier way to do it from here on the board, you can go to configure the setting and then you go to your columns and then you can add here an additional column to your board. So I would say a new column here and I will say this one is in analysis and it will ask you to map it to a state of your user story. So for now, I'll map it to active and you will just see how this that looks like, right? So you can see that it's in analysis. I can now drag and drop all my items back into in analysis and I still have my active here um, and I have my resolve, close and so forth. You can also split the in analysis into in analysis doing and done, right? So how to do that? If you go back to your column and you see your in analysis, you can specify uh, the so split column in doing and done. So if I do this and I save, you will have two column, right? So important to say that maybe we want to remove this active from here, right? So I can go columns and then in active and then I'll remove that column, 
save. And again, you can see that we have in analysis doing done. Resolve, I might want to add a few more. So for example, a column I would like to add here um, in dev. In dev, and it's again mapped to the active state, which it makes, in a sense, it makes sense, right? You move a story to inactive, to be in active state, but then you can specify kind of the detailed status of that user story, the column where it is at, right? And I will split that in doing and done again. So you can see here, it's just before the analysis. So I'll quickly change that again, column and move it to my right. And now I can save. So really the idea is that we collaborate on the user story. We add, you know, description, acceptance criteria. When that's done, you might have a business analyst or a product owner moving that to done. Maybe there is an approval process or there is a review. And then once that's done, you can move that story to um, in dev doing. You might want to add additional things. Usually when it's in done, you might want to add, you know, story points. Maybe this is a five story point. So you can kind of add estimates to your user story before it gets assigned to your dev team for, for the work. Something else that you can do as well is tweaking the cards on the user story. And whatever I'm showing you here, you can do the same for your feature boards and epic boards, right? It applies to all these boards. You can change the column, you can add additional fields on those cards. And whatever I'm showing you, most of the settings that I'm, I'll be showing you in a few seconds on the board applies to the epic Kanban board and the feature Kanban board. So if I continue here, and let's say I want to add a few additional fields. I want to add the parent and I want to add the priority here on the card, right? So how do you do that? You click on the setting and then you can go to fields and then you can select which fields you want to see on the board. I can add an additional field and I want to say, I want to see the priority and I want to see the parent, right? So this way I can see from there um, the priority of the user story, but of course, the parent as well and see the feature that is related to that user story. So that's kind of one way to kind of fine tuning those fields here, pretty handy. Uh, another thing that you can do as well, is add a bit of coloring on those user stories as well. So how do you do that? Back to the setting and then you can play with styles. So let's say uh, you want a style where a priority, so you can specify here the name of your style, priority one, and the color will be, I don't know, orange, and here the field, and this is your priority one, right? So priority equals one, save. There is not, there will be nothing here, but if I now specify the priority for this one as one, you will see that straight away the coloring is applied, right? So you can definitely define some coloring. What I usually do here, I'll show you in a sec, is that I play with my tags, mostly to define the styles and the tag color. So for example, I'll just remove that style for a minute. So I go here and I wanna say that this user story is in review. So I can create a tag. So tagging really lets you here specify tags and you can have as many as you want. So in review, you can specify another tag as maybe blocked, blocked, and then you can specify as well uh, showcase. So this one showcase. So this is the tags I usually use. So one is to show that, that we need to review that user story together. The second one says that this one is blocked. The third one says that with this one maybe requires a showcase to validate some of the design of the requirements with the product owner. You can specify, as we said, as many different tags as you want. This is the ones I usually use. So what I would do to these is I'll go to the styles and I would say where my blocked. So the color here, I want it to be really standing out. So I'll do it red and I will select tags. Tags equals contains here in that case blocked. If I do this, you will see that straight away this user story is blocked. The other one, maybe I don't want them to stand out that much, but I want the tag to stand out, right? So that's another setting. You can go to tag colors 
and then specify here, we'll do in review and we will do yellow and then I'll do another one, showcase and this one I will do maybe green. Save and close. And you can see here now how nicely the tags are showing up here as well. Another setting that I sometimes use is I'll use swim lanes. And a use case for that is, for example, having a swim lane for all my priority run user stories. So just to show you a bit how that works. So if I go to swim lanes, so here you have to leave the default swim lane, but you can add another swim lane on top, which will be my P1. And then you can specify here the color. Let's make it orange. And you can add the criteria and select, for example, a specific field, which will be for us the priority field equals one. Then when I save, you will see how that renders. You have a nice swim lane, but my priority one user stories and all the other ones are below. And you can add as many swim lanes as you want. So let's now also cover work item states. So remember when we working here, we actually created columns for our boards without changing the states, the values of the states in a sense, right? So we created columns for the board and we left the states untouched. What that will do, however, if you go back to your backlog, you will not see your in analysis in dev and so forth. So you can add a column and select board column here. If I move it to state, you will now see your board column, if I extend my user story, you will now see in analysis and so forth. So you can do show the board column here. If you were to change the state to, instead of using active, you want to use in analysis, in dev, in test, that's also possible. However, that would require you to go to your organization settings and not everyone has the right permission to do so. But if you have the permission, you can go to organization settings and then you'll have to tweak the process. So down in organization, you have process and then you will find your agile process here. And for the user story, you will be able to change the state if you wanted to. So you can add additional states here or change. So you cannot directly change the agile process because it's one that's coming by default you would have to create an inherited process. So by creating an inherited process, it creates kind of a child process and then you can make your changes and you can move your project to use that process down the track. This is more an advanced settings. And as I said, not everyone in uh, using Azure DevOps has the right permission to change the processes. That's why I kind of showed you an easy way to change the board and the column on the board to also display, you know, kind of the board column as well next to the state. Voila, I hope that you liked this video. And if that's the case, subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting more videos about Azure DevOps, exploring all these areas, and I'm really hoping to see you in the next one.